Hello everyone, especially to all learners, and welcome to our new lesson for today. And I bet this will be very interesting to all since we're going to discover how molecules travel from one place or one medium to another at ano nga ba yung mga nag act as a barrier. But um, I just want to ask for your pardon since ganito yung quality ng bosses ko kasi I just suffered from a sore throat. Anyways, let's begin. Alright, so do you remember the three major parts of a cell? Ano nga yun? The DNA, the plasma membrane, and the cytoplasm, right? Yung cytoplasm, ito yung medium na kung saan doon nakalocate ang lahat ng mga organelles. But regardless if the cell is prokaryotic or eukaryotic, it always has its DNA where genetic material is stored. So from that, a cytoplasm where metabolic processes is essential to survival. That is where it occurs. And a cell membrane, or the so-called plasma membrane, that serve as a protective barrier of the cell from its environment. So as a protective barrier, the cell and the plasma membrane acts as a gatekeeper, determining which materials can move in and out of the cell. So maybe you're wondering, how does it do this? Okay, let's find out. Okay, so for this lesson, we're going to explore the energy in matter. Transport across membrane. So here is our target, and I really hope we can able to attain this uh, objectives. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss the structure of the cell membrane, differentiate passive and active transport of materials, and lastly, Define diffusion and osmosis, and explain the effects of hypotonic, hypertonic, and isotonic solutions on a cell. Fasten your seatbelts. Let's begin. So the structure of the cell membrane plays a very important role in how it is able to serve as the gatekeeper of the cell. As you can see here in the figure, there are three primary components of the cell membrane. Namely, the post-polypid bilayer. Nakita nyo ngayon, merong head at merong tail. Yung head na yan, yun yung hydro, uh, hydrophilic, while the tail is yung hydrophobic. And then, aside from that, all of the proteins that, that is usually color in blue, nakita natin dito, are violet somewhat. Meron niyang mga protein channel, mga peripheral protein, and some other proteins. And of course, the carbohydrates. Yan ang nakukita niyong uh, color in green. Okay? So, how these components help uh, in making the membrane selectively permeable? As we know, when we say selectively permeable, semi-permeable, it can able to transport, or it is porous, can able to transfer materials from at the other side of the cell from the outside of the cell into the inside of the cell okay so let's find out the primary structure responsible for the semi permeability of the cell membrane is the postpolypid bilayer as you can see here on the diagram postpolypid has two parts ano yon the hydrophilic head meaning sila yung water-loving part of the cell membrane, and the hydrophobic tails, water-fearing, may phobia sa tubig, yung mga tails, kaya nga inside sila ng uh, cell membrane, on the inside. Being water-loving, the heads of the phospholipid bilayer always face the watery surroundings, inside and outside of the cell. Let's recall that Sa ating cell, or usually sa blood natin, 90% yon ng water, right? Whereas, the tails, being water-hating or water-fearing, automatically avoid it. Kaya nga, they are inside of the cell membrane. As what I said, the cell membrane also includes a large number of proteins embedded in the postpolipid bilayer. Other than transport across membrane, these proteins also help in cellular communication. And finally, you can notice here that carbohydrates attach to the membrane proteins and also 
of the phospholipid. These carbohydrates help in cell recognition para malaman na nila kung yun ba ay pathogen or yun ba ay helpful si cell. The ability to, to, to distinguish one cell from the other. Because the cell membrane looks like a mosaic of phospholipids, proteins, and carbohydrates, and because the phospholipids and membrane proteins slide freely around the structure of the cell, sa kanyang surface, the cell membrane is described as a fluid mistake. Tandaan nyo yan. The fluidity of the cell membrane is very essential to its ability to control the movement of substances into and out of the cell. Okay, so there are two major ways on how materials are transported across the cell membrane. The passive and the active transport. Passive transport is a type of transport that does not require the use of energy. At ano yung energy of the cell? Ang tawag doon ay ATP, right? The adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy currency of life. So what drives this type of transport is the difference in concentration gradient in the cell. For example, there is an area of high and low concentration inside or outside of the cell. Thus, passive transport happens when substances move from one area of a higher concentration to an area of low concentration. So, the three types of passive transport are diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. Remember that. So, we're going to describe that one later on. And, ayan, the other kind or of um, transport across the membrane is the active transport. So, meron siyang two types. It can be exocytosis. When we say exo, sa labas, exceed. And endocytosis, nasa loob. Alright, so let's explore the first type of passive transport, which is diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area, remember this, of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. For example, when you apply cologne in yourself, the cologne molecules diffuse from you to your surroundings. And this is the reason why a friend of yours across the room can also smell your perfume. In the cell, however, nonpolar molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide gases can directly pass through the double layer of the hydrophobic tails, while small polar molecules like water can also cross the cell membrane directly. So, for now, let's explore a simple diffusion demonstration. Remember, class, that simple diffusion happens or it is very spontaneous it occurs continuously and there is no energy needed or required to bring it about for example here in letter a a red dye is added to water separated by a membrane the red dye molecules can pass through the membrane and the dye molecules can move randomly about but over time, the net movement of dye is toward the region of lower concentration. In letter B, eventually, the dye molecules are equally distributed throughout the container and there is no net movement of dye in either direction. The next type of passive transport is osmosis. Osmosis is just a special type of diffusion which focuses on the movement of water, water molecules across the membrane. The membrane acts like a net that keeps solutes like sugar or salt trapped in the cell, but still allows water to pass through freely. In this regard, a cell may be in three different types of solution, isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions. When a cell is in its natural environment remember it is in an isotonic meaning iso equal and tonicus meaning strength solution by this we mean that the concentration of solute of one solution to another solution is the same for example in the body cells are bathed by blood 
the concentration of salt in the cell is 9% or 0.9%. The blood also contains salt at the same concentration. 0.9%. Thus, we say that cells are in isotonic solution. Now, what happens when the salt concentration in the blood is higher or lower than that of the salt concentration inside the cell? Let's explore. But first, as you can see here sa ating animation, yung blue na yan, circle, or the water, and yung green, yung sugar. As you can see, from a higher sugar concentration, Yung water diffused, or yung low sugar concentration, yung water from the other side move, okay, in the selectively permeable membrane. As you can see here, class, cells must always be in an isotonic solution with that of their surroundings. Otherwise, they may shrink or burst, okay? So when the solution outside the cell has higher solute concentration or the cell is in hypertonic solution, water will move out of the cell to dissolve the extra solute. The cell then loses water, shrinks, and dies. On the other hand, when the solution outside the cell has lower solute concentration than that of the cell or the cell is in hypotonic solution, water from the surrounding will move into the cell, causing the cell to swell and burst. One very good application of this is the concept when making daing, tuyo or dried fish. When you put a lot of salt on the fish, waters from the cells of the fish move out, spreading up the drying process. Let's explore more about this, okay? So when red blood cells is placed in a hypertonic solution, hyper meaning more than, okay, it loses water. Outside the cell, the concentration of solute is higher and the concentration of water is lower than inside the cell. Animal cells placed in a hypertonic solution shrink. Remember that. For example, meats, meats are sometimes preserved diba? by being salted as what I've discussed a while ago. Yung, <clears throat> yung paggawa ng daing. Bacteria are killed not by the salt, remember, but the but by the lack of water in the meat. On the other hand, when cells or when this red blood cells is placed in a hypotonic solution, hypo mean, means less than, it gains water. Outside the cell, the concentration of solute is less and the concentration of water is greater than inside the cell. So animal cells placed in this kind of solution, hypotonic solution, expand and sometimes burst. Ayan. The term lysis refers to disruptive cells, while hemolysis then is disrupted red blood cells. Remember that. Lastly, remember class, in the laboratory, cells are normally placed in an isotonic solution. When we say iso, same as, the same, in which the cell neither gain nor loses water. That is, the concentration of water is the same on both sides of the membrane. Okay? I hope na nakuha nyo yun. So, as a review, when red blood cells is placed in isotonic solution, remember, normal cell siya. Okay? Wala kasing gaining and losing of concentration of water. Okay? Next, when the cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, the red blood cells tend to swell or burst. Remember? And, of course, when the red blood cells are placed in hypertonic solution, the cells normally shrivel. Okay? It shrinks. Another example is that on plant cells. Again, when a plant cell, cells, I mean, is placed on the isotonic solution, iso means same, so walang nagigain, walang naglulus ng water, kaya yung both sides of the membrane is the same, yung concentration of water, kaya normal yung cell. 
But when a plant cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, the large central vacuole, as you can see here, gains water. And the plasma membrane pushes against the rigid cell wall as the plant becomes turgid. The plant cell does not burst pareho ng red blood cells because the cell wall does not give way. Trigger pressure in plant cells is extremely important in maintaining their erect position. However, when a plant cell is placed in a hypertonic solution, the plasma membrane pulls away from the cell, from the cell wall, I mean, as the large central vacuole loses water. This is an example, example of plasmolysis the shrinking of the cytoplasm due to osmosis. Kaya ngayong cut flowers placed into salty water will wilt due to plasmolysis. The dead plants you may see along a roadside could have died due to exposure of a hypertonic solution during the winter when salt was used on the road. That's it. Let's move on to the next. So here, let's have some connections on health. Maybe sometimes you are asking or you're wondering, why can't you drink salt water or seawater? Seawater kasi is a hypertonic to our cells. It contains approximately 3.5% of salt, whereas our cells contain 0.9%. As what I said kanina, once the salt had entered your blood, your cells would shrivel up and die as they lose water trying to dilute the excess salt. Your kidneys can, also, can only produce urine that is slightly less salty than seawater. So, you would dehydrate providing the amount of water necessary to rid your body of the salt. Kaya hindi magandang inumin yung seawater. Alright, so let's have some practice. Here, your younger, uh, your younger sibling found a starfish along the shore one day. She decided to bring it home to show it to her friends. So, she picked a small jar, put the tap water in it, and placed the starfish inside. Upon arriving home, she noticed that the starfish was already dead. How will you explain to her what happened? Just choose which word in the parenthesis will make your explanation correct. Okay? So, here, tingnan natin. Your you put the starfish in blank solution or in tap water. What is your answer? Kindly put your answer sa ating comment section or below sa ating uh, in-call messages. What do you think? Hypertonic or hypotonic? Yung tap water. It's hypotonic. Okay? Hypotonic solution. This means that the cells of the starfish have, is it higher or lower solute concentration than that of the tap water? It's higher. Ayan. Means that the cells of the starfish have higher solute concentration than that of the tap water. So the water move into or from the cell. To dissolve the extra solute particles. Thus, the cells, what do you think? It may swell or shrink, causing the death of the starfish. Ito muna tayo. The tap water, so the tap water, so the water move into or from? Please type in sa ating comment section. It's into. Okay, remember that. Into the cell to dissolve the extra solute particles, and thus the cells will swell, causing the death of the starfish. I hope maraming um, nag nakabigay sa inyo ng tamang sagot. Okay, let's move on. So another type of um, passive transport is the facilitated diffusion. Many of the molecules that cells need, including ions and large hydrophilic molecules such as proteins and carbohydrates, cannot pass freely across the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane. Kasi nga, large sila, malalaki sila. How do you think these molecules pass through the membrane? Paano nga ba sila nakakapag-enter 
into the cell through special gates called transport proteins. Kasi meron tayong mga proteins, special proteins sa ating plasma membrane. As we know, the cell membrane has membrane proteins embedded in them, di ba? These membrane proteins are the transport proteins that act as a special gateways para silang gate to these hydrophilic mole molecules. As the name implies, facilitated diffusion still move materials across the membrane due to concentration difference. Kung mas madam madami pa yung kabilang side at mas lower yung concentration sa kabilang side. Thus, just like simple diffusion and osmosis, no energy is required or is used in this kind of transport because the movement happens due to the concentration gradient. Ayan. That's it. So now we are done with the passive transport. Let's move on to the next type of transport in, an act in the membrane, the active transport. So this type of transport is considered active, active because energy is needed to transport material materials across the membrane. Why is energy needed? Because the movement is against the concentration gradient. Para lang siyang, parang ikaw na, for example, tumatawid ka dun sa ilog, you are against the flow of the water. By this, we mean that substances will move from an area of lower concentration to an area of higher concentration. Let's imagine yourself swimming in a river where you would, you know, you will exert more energy when going with the direction of the flow of the water or against it. This is the same in transport across membranes. When a molecule moves against a concentration gradient, energy is needed. Remember that. At syempre, sa ating cell, ang energy natin is in the form of ATP or the adenosine triphosphate. Alright. So, the use of transport protein to move molecules against a concentration gradient using energy, so-called ATP, is an example of an active transport as what I said. So, you can see here in the figure, sodium and potassium ions are moved across the membrane by the sodium-potassium pump. May mga nakaka-locate kasi dyang mga pumps. Yung sodium natin, yung orange in color, I think, and yung potassium, yung yellow in color. So, by by the use of ATP or the energy in the ATP, ATP this is very useful and ve is really needed for the sodium and potassium to be transported from the extracellular fluid into the cytoplasm of the cell. Another type of um, active transport is the bulk transport of molecule to the cell membrane. Bulk transport can be in through endocytosis and exocytosis. In endocytosis, a portion of the cell membrane folds inward and pinches off, enclosing material within a vesicle inside the cell. White blood cells used endocytosis to engulf invading bacteria. Endo, kinakain kasi nila. Endocytosis may be considered cellular eating when solid molecules are engulfed or cellular drinking when, when liquid molecules are taken. in. While, on the other hand, exocytosis is the opposite process of endocytosis. In exocytosis, a vesicle fuses its membrane with the cell membrane and dumps its contents outside the cell. Many endocrine cells use exocytosis to release hormones into the bloodstream. Ayan. So here is an example of how exocytosis happens from the inside to the outside. Okay? Gumagamit lang sila ng mga vesicles, uh, specialized vesicles. Next, here on this figure naman is an example of endocytosis, cell eating. Okay? For example, a liquid is being engulfed, engulfed, I mean, into the cell. Oh, I guess we are done. If you have any clarifications, questions, 
or any information na gusto nyong i-add, please don't hesitate to ask me and uh, comment in our comment section or sa ating in-call messages. And that's it. I think let's end here. I hope you learned something. And see you on our next video lesson. Goodbye, everyone.